Hey guys, Mike with Long Range with the Lilies. Uh, here with a video aimed mostly at the mid-pack or below shooters, the guys just getting into the game. Um, what sparked this video was a conversation I had with a gentleman at a local uh, regional level match held out at the Lead Farm over in Eastern Washington. Great venue, they run a great match. If you guys live up in the Pacific Northwest, I highly encourage you guys to check them out. Uh, what happened was this gentleman after the match I was kind of cleaning up my stuff. Uh, it was pouring down rain earlier. We had this, this nice little break in the rain. He came up to me and he wanted to talk to me about getting into reloading. Uh, he had seen our videos that we had done with Scott and he, he wanted to get into reloading. And I was like, oh man, that's great. Like, you know, what makes you want to get into reloading? And he said he felt like his ammunition was what's holding him back. He said that his gun shoots good. It's about a half MOA, but his ES is about 50. And he felt like, especially at long ranges, he was missing and he didn't know why. And he was blaming the ammo. Um, so we had a conversation about it. And I know that some of you are watching this video like, that's not why you miss. Uh, you would be surprised at the number of people that hold this thought process. Um, so I had a conversation with him like, you know, why do you feel that way? You know, what are your thoughts? And we got to talking about it. And the best thing I could say is like, well, hey, let's look at that. Let's analyze that. Um, he was running his ballistic solver off a, a phone and uh, I had my Kestrel. So for the purposes of this video, I stole Achilles because mine's out in the truck and I'm too lazy to get it. So plus I feel way more comfortable manipulating the data in Keeley's Kestrel uh, than mine. I'm sure she feels differently and I will mostly remember to put everything back like I found it. Anyway, so what we have pulled up is my dasher. So the gun that I pulled up and showed him and I, what I'm gonna do for you guys now is a dasher going 2850 shooting Berger 109 long range hybrid targets. Uh, my velocity is 2850. So manipulating the number in the Kestrel, uh, I went ahead and wrote all this down just to speed it up. Um, if you guys are wanting to know how to do that, you go to gun, Click that, manipulate your muzzle velocity, and then go back to your range card, and you can see the differences at different muzzle velocities. Just go back and forth with those. Uh, just make sure you set your muzzle velocity back to where it was, or you will have <laughs> be chasing your tail once you get back out there. So um, the Dasher at 109, uh, with the 109s, is going 2850. That's the speed that I run it. Uh, and that's just what it is. I do feel like that most PRS NRL matches are won between 500 yards and about 700 to 800 yards. Just, so just for data points, let's pull out 500 yards and 1,000 yards. And so at 2850, my dope at 500 yards is 2.42. And at 1,000 yards, it's 7.76. That's at 2850. If I reduce the velocity down to 2825, it's 2.47 and 2 and 7.92. Now, if I increase the velocity up to 2875, so now we did 2825 and now we're doing 2875, it's 2.37 and then 7.59. So the difference in a 50 foot per second extreme spread at 500 yards is a tenth, a tenth of a mil. Uh, I don't know any place out there where we shoot targets at 500 yards, except maybe a, a KYL rack that a tenth is um, the size of the target. You'll be within the width of the target 99.9% .9 of the time. And at 1,000 yards, the delta or difference between them and ES is 0.33. So uh, again, I feel like at 1,000 yards, one, there's not many targets at 1,000 yards. Two, most of the targets at 1,000 yards are bigger than 0.3. Um, again, a, a 0.3 size target at 1,000 yards would be a very, very small target. Uh, so, <coughs> excuse me, just so I didn't pull just one data point to stake my entire case on, I ran it for two more popular cartridges uh, out there in the PRS NRL world that Keeley and I both shoot. So I did a 6 GT with 115 RDFs and then a six Creedmoor with 110 A-tips. So the difference at 500 yards for both of those was again a 10th. Uh, the GT's going 2950 with 115 RDFs and the Creedmoor's doing 3010 with 110 A-tips. Again, a 10th of difference. Uh, and then we had a thousand yards 
It was three tenths of difference exactly for the uh, GT and a little under three tenths of a difference, 0.28 in the Creedmoor, which makes sense. The faster you're going the, is the larger your velocity number, the less of a percentage difference 50 feet per second would be. So the less it would affect your elevation, but we're talking minor, minor differences from 2850 all the way up to 3010. The difference that it makes in extreme spread is less than 0 0.05 of a difference between my dasher with 109s and the A tips with 110 as far as how much the, the velocity spread is affected at 50 feet per second. So, you know, why am I making this point? So my point is not to talk anybody out of reloading. Like if you want to learn reloading, absolutely, man, dive into reloading. But I want to temper your expectations as to the results that you can expect out of that. If anything, and I found this lesson out personally the hard way, uh, I started shooting, I started getting better. And then I, you know, I was getting to the bottom end of that mid pack range. And then I started learning reloading and my performance actually went way down because I was learning this entirely new complicated subject in addition to trying to learn how to shoot. Um, so I will say that there is a learning curve to reloading. Uh, just like shooting, if you're gonna take up reloading, definitely find a mentor that you can ask all your ridiculous questions to. And I promise you, you're gonna have some ridiculous question. Um, so when you get into the reloading, there's you know a large expenditure of initial investment in money and as well as time. So again, my, my what's my point in all this? Well, my point is I feel like if you're learning how to shoot, shoot you're learning how to get better at this game, that time could be better invested fixing your fundamentals, learning how to shoot this game. And it is a game. There's some little details and gameisms and you know, how to shoot barricades, how to shoot, you know, different things um, that you can address, you know, learning how to read wind. Uh, if you live in the Southeast, that's not really a problem for you. Uh, I'm just kidding, guys. Don't take it personal. Please don't blow up my text messages. Um, you're going to anyway, but that's fine. Anyway, like I'm saying, you could invest that time better in other areas. If you want to learn reloading, learn reloading. If you're a guy that loves tinkering and playing with new cartridges and, you know, learning about why stuff works, then yeah, get into it. But it is probably not the thing that's stopping you from climbing the ladder in the score sheets. I just wanted to put that out there. Also, most factory grade, um, match grade ammunition will shoot within 50 feet per second extreme spread. Uh, you, I think that most of it out there, obviously I haven't tested all of it. In fact, that's probably a great video. Maybe I'll do that for you guys. I'll get some factory ammunition from a bunch of different companies and test it out, throw the data up there that I see and uh, we'll go from there. But I do know that there are some great ammunition companies out there that make great quality ammunition that could be used to win national level matches. I know like Clay's Cartridge Company produces some great stuff. I know Unknown Munitions in Idaho produces some great stuff. I hear good stuff about Copper Creek. Um, and there's all these other companies out there, these small little companies that produce good quality ammunition that you could use to win a national level match. So don't look beyond that. It really comes down to what is your time worth and where can you best spend that time? So guys, if you've stuck around this far, thanks for watching. I appreciate every one of you. Hopefully this sparks some conversation. Feel free to hit us up in the comment section. Uh, we can talk about it, argue about it. You can call me an idiot. That's the beauty of the internet. Uh, and we can go from there. Um, this is just, again, I have never taken the uh, position that I am the subject matter expert and you guys need to do everything I say. I'm just sharing what my experiences have taught me as I've come up along the way. And uh, I know that I, I do enjoy reloading now. I hate the amount of time I spend doing it, but I do enjoy the process. Um, but I will say that it did hurt me there for a while in my performance too, as I was learning it. And I know I spent so much time uh, on the phone with people that I respect as reloaders learning and uh, answering all my dumb questions. So guys, Thanks for watching. We'll see you out there real soon. Please like and like, share and subscribe if you like what you see. I look forward to getting out there in 2022 and starting the new season all over again and also finishing up the 2021 slash 22 NRL season because they run 
uh, spring to spring, which is kind of a different flavor. I kind of like it. Anyway, guys, we'll see you out there real soon.